The next one is very recent. It's actually a paper that came out, I guess, this week or the previous week. And this is for zero shot text to image generation. It's from OpenAI. And you can see that this is an extension of GPT-3. And the problem with GPT-3 was that if it's talking about something, it has never seen such a thing before. For, for example, if, if it is talking about an airplane, it has never seen the image of an airplane. So it's only learning it from text. And as you can see, the state of the art is moving towards combining text and images. Uh, I'm sure you have heard of this, or it's DALI, the method. What is that? It's a 12 billion parameter autoregressive transformer. So you're taking a transformer, it's an autoregressive transformer, it has a lot of parameters, and because it has a lot of parameters, you're gonna train it on a lot of images or pairs of images and text. So basically you're scraping the web, the entire internet. That's gonna give you your data, it's a lot of data and it's a lot of parameters. But the method is very simple. It's an autoregressive transformer. The only catch is that for text, we knew how to tokenize it. We had a dictionary and we would just look up the IDs of those words. That's going to give you the integers. How are we going to tokenize an image? If you tokenize an image, then your problem is going to be solved. So our problem is to turn an image into a bunch of tokens. Basically treat an image as if it's a sentence. And then once you have that, you can apply your, the decoder part of your transformer, predict the next word or predict the next token, and then you kind of start generating text and images. How are we going to tokenize it? We are going to use discrete variational autoencoder. So don't worry about variational autoencoders. That's actually the next paper that I'm going to go through. It's going to be next week, actually next uh, session. The discrete part is because we want to turn an image into a bunch of integers. And that's why it's discrete. I'm not going to cover discrete in this course, but the extension is very simple. Once you learn variational autoencoders, you're going to know how to discrete it, how to make it discrete. What are we going to have? We are going to have an, we are going to have an encoder that's going to take an image that is 256 by 256 by 3, and then we are going to tokenize it. We are going to have 8,192 tokens. And then rather than working with 256 by 256 by three, it's a lot of numbers to work with. It's a lot of context because if you flatten that vector, that's gonna be a very long context. And we know that transformers have limited context. So that's a very big, a huge context. We cannot work with that. So we want to turn that into 32 by 32 tokens, okay? Actually, this is your context. This is the number of tokens, that's your context. And that's gonna be a smaller context. Now you can work with them. That's the encoder. The decoder is gonna be your prior. It's gonna take you from these integers to the power 32 by 32 to images. And then the way we are gonna learn about variational autoencoder, so don't worry about it. This is the variational distribution. This is your prior distribution and uh, discrete because these numbers are discrete. They are not continuous. And because they are discrete, we are going to use something called Gumball softmax. So it's going to make those numbers. It's going to give you probabilities. It's a continuous approximation of discrete probabilities. So that's, you can read about it. So that's not a big deal. What did we just achieve? Our previous context was very big. It was 256 by 256 by three. Now we turned it into 32 by 32. This is 900, 192 times smaller in terms of your context. So you reduce the context size. And then if you have an image, you can reconstruct that image using this framework. And then yes, you're losing some information. The image is becoming blurry, but then it is still looking good. I mean, you didn't take the foot of the cat and put it on top of the head of the cat. So the image makes sense as a whole. So that's how you summarize, you tokenize your image. Now your image is uh, a bunch of tokens, is 32 by 32 tokens. That's your context. And these are your tokens. Now your image is a sentence and that's the vocabulary size for your images. So now your image is a sentence, perfect. Now that it's a sentence, you can take a pair of an image and the corresponding uh, 
sentence. So now this one is also is actually a sentence because you are doing text and images. Y is going to be your text. Z is going to be your image. You concatenate them. That's your training data. And then your task is predict the next word, predict the next token. Given the history, given the context, predict the next token. That's your transformer. And we were doing it all the time. This was exactly GPT-3. We train it, and then some cool stuff is going to come out. If you condition on a tapir made of accordion, these are the images that are going to get generated. So it's starting to imagine, imagine imaginary uh, images. A baby hedgehog in a Christmas sweater walking a dog. And these are the images that the network generates. A neon sign that reads back prop. So that's your sentence that you're going to condition on. And that's going to generate images like this. Or you can do image to image translation. And if you want to generate images that look more realistic, they are not imaginary, you can say, let's condition on a very cute cat laying by a big bike. This is the actual ground truth. This is one of the images in your training data. And this is what the network is generating. This one looks very good. China Airlines plane on the ground at an airport with baggage cars nearby. So that's an image that is generated by this method and etc. A very cute giraffe making a funny face. I think I'm gonna stop here. And for those of you who have questions, we can ask. And for those of you who want to leave, you can leave. I'll be around. I had a question. Sure. So you take an image and you convert it into 32 by 32, um, I don't know what you call it, well, not filters, but like 8,192 of them, every image? Yes. So every image is going to turn into uh, 32 by 32 integers from 1 up until 8,192. So that's your vocabulary size for your images. I didn't quite catch that. Uh, so that's fine. So let's say this is your image. And each image is going to have a pixel. Am I correct? Yeah. And each pixel is going to have three channels, red, green, blue. Mm -hmm. And those red, green, blue are usually a number from 0 to 255. But these are uh, real numbers. You can quantize that maybe to integers or to whatever that you want. Then that's going to be a way that you are tokenizing your image. OK, that's fine. Yes, each pixel. And each color of your pixel, you can represent it, I don't know, by 256 numbers, integers. But then that's good. There is a problem. If you do that, you're going to have a very huge context. Because in the end, what are you going to do? You're going to take your image and flatten it. OK? Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's going to be a lot of uh, numbers to work with. It's a huge context. And uh, transformers cannot work with that huge of a context. So it's better to reduce the context. So it's better to reduce the pixels, 256 by 256 to 3, to be 32 by 32. That's your context. But then now you're allowing it to have a bigger span for the type of numbers that could happen. OK, so that's about 8 years. So it just doesn't have to one... be from 0 to 255. It could be from 1 up until 8,000. So, and these are convolutions. So you do some convolution operations. Mm -hmm. And this is also some convolution. That makes uh, more sense. Um, and then we just use it, it's an, uh, the relational autoencoder with the sentences. Yes. So the discrete variational autoencoder was for you to turn your images and tokenize them. That's the only purpose here. Okay. Once you tokenize them, each image you can treat that as a sentence, and then it's just a task of sentence to sentence translation from that point on. Is that a sentence? I don't understand that. Oh, how is this a sentence? Yeah. It's a sentence. Actually, what is a sentence? It's a collection That's, of words. It's a sequence of words. So it's yeah. a sequence of integers. Am I right? Yeah. Oh, so you're saying it's just a, a sequence of uh, pixels? So yeah, it, this is exactly a sequence of integers. It's 32 by, if, after you flatten it, mm -hmm. it's going to be 32 by 32. That's the length of your sentence. And these are the words that could appear. These are the tokens in your sentence. Okay. So Thanks. does that answer your question? Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. I guess it just doesn't look very, I don't know. I mean, it's probably impressive. I just don't really see the, the new things about it in comparison to GPT other than just reducing the size. So yeah, in comparison to GPT-3, the only 
new thing that you're seeing is taking an image and turning it into a sequence of tokens. As soon as you do that, your images are sentences. Basically, they're going to be equivalent. You can treat your images as sentences. And then your task is text-to-text -text translation rather than text-to-image. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. And then it's also a matter of scale, like 12 billion parameters and 250 million images and text. So collecting the data is a big task that they do in this paper. Okay. Right. Yeah. 